Very quiet. <laughs> hey, George, are you representing finance tonight? Looks like I'm not. Well, Jim's here too. We'll, oh, we'll split the duties. Oh, good. Yeah, that's strange. Where is everybody? AJ oh. sent an email out to remind everybody with the link. Um, I think Caitlin is supposed to join us as well, right? Yeah, Caitlin said she could make it, I believe. There's not two separate links, right, Becky? No. I only did one link. Right. And the email we got had the same link that's on the website. Uh, I'm trying out. to figure out why there, nobody's here. What could it be? Uh, should I call, I'll call Susie, see if she's on another link. Because they could all be sitting somewhere else. But Jim's here. Right. Hi, Caitlin. Well, this is the link. This is the link that works for the email. Um, do you, are you having trouble logging in? Where um I don't have anybody in my waiting room. Okay. Oh, here we go. Ten people just came in. Right. Very strange. Okay, see ya. Bye. It's all good now. Right. Hey folks, everybody hear me okay? okay? Yes. Yes. All right, uh, I think I can get us started. I'm just looking, if we're waiting for anybody from the finance committee. Um, I just spoke with, no. I, do you have everybody? One, uh, two. Becky, eight, do you know if Gail is uh, six, hopping seven. on? What? Do you know if Gail is hopping on? I can't hear her. Yes. Yeah, she'll be on tonight. Yeah, Gail, Gail I think, was um, scheduled for 6.45. Yeah. Yeah, we were going to do Gail first. Um, right. With all these school committee people here. I know, <laughs> right. <laughs> And she's uh, not here. But I could let Gail, I, I think we should do, if we do a school committee, I can contact Gail on her cell. Okay. And so we'll start. Like 7.15? Yeah, that works. That's fine. Okay. I thought since since her budget was so. Yeah, she could be done in five minutes, but. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so let's, um, we've got a full crew from the, representing the school, the elementary school. So let's, let's start with them. So, um. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And uh, maybe I'll ask Jackie just if there's any critical folks from, from your team that you're still uh, waiting on, or we can just dive in. Um, well, the superintendent is not coming. And so uh, just Caitlin and I are representing the administrative end. Okay. Um, and it looks like we have one school committee member not here, but the rest are here. And Julie is saying, yes, I guess they knew that. Okay, great. Okay, sounds good. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. We and... might wanna call our meeting to order and they might too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I'm going to call the FinCom uh, to order at 6.35. And does the school committee need to um, call their committee to order? Yeah. We'll call the school committee to order at 6.36. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for the reminder, Susie. All right, so uh, with that, I think what I'll do is, is share my screen. I have... Um, draft of the elementary school budget um, that we can walk through. Let me just, first of all, make sure that I'm working off of the most recent 
version, right? It's dated January 18th. There's not a update to this document, correct? Okay. Um, and then if, I guess if somebody has the, uh, has the school committee voted on this budget? So it's, it's been approved by the school committee. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Preliminary um, adoption. Hi, but not Dave. final. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, could it, would it be okay if you come on at 7.15? Becky, you need um, to mute. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I think, Caitlin, you might have said something. I, I just, I didn't quite hear. So we've had a preliminary adoption, but not a final adoption. But okay, got it. All right. And I, I, if there's any um, areas or sort of categories that you anticipate potentially um, changing in a significant way, maybe you can sort of point that out to us. Um, Caitlin, do you want to kind of just how would you like would you, would you want to kind of walk us through kind of do a high level um, overview of the budget um, and some of the kind of significant factors that have maybe changed uh, since last uh, last budget year, either in a positive or negative direction. Would that would that be? Uh, sure, I can maybe. I can walk us through as we scroll oh. down. Okay, all right. So, so this is the the budget summary, mm -hmm. which is the overall budget. We've had some challenges this year. Um, it's the end of ESSER money. So that ends on September 30th. And we are looking at still employing the, the adjustment counselor 0.5 FTE for the, the next fiscal year. That's one of our additions. And we've also had some out of district expenses and, um, ELL teacher expenses. So that's why you see a higher than normal um, use of funding and total for the town appropriation for this year. And we can go through that yeah. piece by piece as we go through. Okay. So the, let me just ask one quick question. Um, sure. So the, the 0.5 FTE that's allocated for the adjustment counselor, which just, I think just to remind everybody from the finance committee that that was a kind of a temporary role that was adopted sort of post pandemic and was funded through ESSER funds in, in the last couple of budget years. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Okay. And the, the, the committee has decided that that ought to be kind of a fixed permanent feature of the um, of the school personnel? Yes, yeah, so the school committee okay. finds great value in having the adjustment counselor, and we would like to continue to have a 0.5 adjustment counselor for next okay. year. All right. And so that additional position or half an FTE, which we, we wouldn't have previously seen in the in prior years operating budgets, that's kind of incorporated into this instruction um, kind of category of the budget. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. So it goes under therapeutic services in the instruction mm -hmm. um, category. Okay. So this this additional um, eighty nine thousand and change above and beyond last year's budget. Would it be accurate for me to say that that reflects this additional position, which wasn't previously funded in the in the operating budget, plus um, uh, uh, cost of living raises that are sort of built into the 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 contract uh, that uh, the teacher contract. Yes, so that is an um, the additional point five adjustment counselor plus a an estimated. Um, Cola for because we're in a contract year for uh, the rest of the the salaries in the instruction category. Okay. Yeah, and I do I do just want to say AJ to everybody. I just want to I think you all know, but I want to remind everyone that the school is in negotiations for a new contract this year, and um, so we we put in a, a placeholder, but we you know do not know what what 
the result is going to be obviously yet. Yeah. Can you share what that placeholder is? And, and is it just based on what was used last year or? It is a 2.5%, but we also have an alternate budget for a 2.25%, which decreases it a little bit. Mm -hmm. We just don't know where the bargaining is, is going to go. But what and I don't know if people have been following the bargaining happening in Massachusetts, but uh, I think it would be good to, to, to at least keep a placeholder as a 2.5. Okay. And that's what's reflected in this document that we're looking at now. Okay. Got it. All right. Uh, thanks. I wanted to just make sure I kind of wrap my head around. Um, that. And one more thing, AJ, okay. that I think yeah, you'll please. find important um, is, and, and Caitlin, I don't, I don't know if it's under instruction, which I would assume it was, or other school services, but we also do need, we have students requiring by law, um, English as a second language, uh, basically, uh, instruction. That, and so we have to hire a teacher that is certified um, in ESL. So, or e, we call it EL students now. Um, so that is also something that we don't have a choice on and we have to incorporate. Okay. And is that is that a new position that you've had to staff due to uh, the needs of particular students? or So that wasn't, we wouldn't have seen that in last year's operating budget? It's last, an increase from last year. It was an increase. And last year we tried to support some of it. In it well, yes, it's an increase in time. So mm -hmm. last year we only needed a point four or maybe even less than that at one point. And this year we we have more students with that need. Yeah. All right. Um Susie, I see your hand up. Yeah. I'm a little confused. I know that on the, um, and we'll see it on the page with teacher salaries, the increase is 3.49 <clears throat> on the schedule here. So is only some of that for the um, negotiated rate, uh, a placeholder for negotiated uh, raises? So it's for the COLA and step increases and any salary, um, any column changes for increased degrees. COLA step. And so the contract is around COLA. Well, and step. What will the negotiations cover? All of it. Nego so it's a step. So the more years experience you have, the more money you make. And it, there's a cap. I, I think we're at, I think our cap is 12 to 15, one of those. And then the columns are based on level of education, right? So it's bachelor's, master's, master's plus I think we have just 30 and then CAG's doctorate. That's how ours goes. But all of those pieces, the the um, the education levels and the years of experience, those are all negotiated within the contract. Those can be changed or altered. Uh, so for uh, example, if, a if someone got their master's and have another level, another year of teaching under their belt, now they're moving over a column and down a column. So not only are they getting a COLA increase, but they're getting an, um, a baseline salary increase. So that's why the percentage <clears throat> on the line is 3.49, because it includes other movements anticipated not related to the contract, right? Because you're saying the contract whole placeholder was 2.5. That's my understanding, yes. Caitlin can chime in. Yes, so we look at um, every position in the school and pro projecting that if every person, obviously there will be some, some, there could be some changes in staffing if someone leaves, someone comes in, but um, what we are projecting with the staffing in the school right now, we look at every single person and what they were making, they would be making next year um, with their step increase and with a projected COLA mm -hmm. and um, what we know about any column changes. Okay. Uh, Bob? Yeah, um, I, I don't know if the direct of this uh, question to Caitlin or to, yeah, to Caitlin and the school committee as well. Uh, I just see as a 7.2% increase in the budget is a significant increase as you probably know. 
and outside of our normal range. And I understand your uh, what you're saying about the cost. But one thing that stuck out to me was that lines uh, 71 and 96 have to do with the SPED issue, both uh, tuition and um, transportation. And I'm just wondering if that is a uh, if that's a long term expense that should be part of the budget or it should maybe be dealt with as a short term expense. That's my first question. Uh, can you answer that for me, someone? So I don't know what, um, how many years, but it is. I can, yeah. I know we have to keep confidentiality, Caitlin. I can say it's a more than three years issue. Right. So the reason I ask it, Jackie, is because uh, if it's, if we don't have to, it, should it, the question is in my mind, should this be part of your budget or should we address this issue in some other way that would, so it wouldn't impact your budget? The way it's obviously what would that other way be? a lot of money. Sorry, Bob, what, what would that other? Well, in the past, we had an issue. I think my recollection is correct. It was very similar to this. And we funded it from reserves instead of from, as part of the budget so that it wouldn't impact long-term budget. So mm -hmm. I just see that as something that we should be looking at. And I wanted Bob, to feel yeah, the thank financial you. The people here about, about that issue. Thank you. I was talking to Caitlin about this today and I couldn't exactly remember the specifics, but you're correct. I do believe uh, this is my 10th year. So I'm going to say around year three, we had a similar issue with this. And I, I, I vaguely remember that happening um, about it coming out of somewhere else. I couldn't remember the specifics, but I think you have a good question, but I do know that, you know, we we thought it would be responsible to just put it into this budget and have the disc have everybody else have that those discussions. The other thing, yeah, thank you. I, I think we can look into this and uh, and maybe you can and we can discuss it further. The other question I had was, or the comment I had, and I've made this comment in the past, and I, I'm going to make it again. Sorry, uh, the school choice funding, uh, all the the uh, the roles and the uh, positions at the end of this document. That's not part of the budget. It seems to me that if they're continuing expenses in school, they should be part of the budget. It also seems to me that the school choice money, I know it's a revolving account. I've learned about the ins and outs of that issue. And I know that you need to have reserves, maintain the reserves. But I do think that the amount of money that's taken from that reserve in this year and any other year should be applied to the budget. And I think that's a better, fairer way of accounting for it. That's what Amherst Regional School does. That's what Leverett does. That's what Helen does. So I don't understand why we don't do it that way. And I well, think I if you did you include that... those, excuse me, if you did include those items in your budget, that would add an additional uh, good chunk of change. So, and it would be, a, a, you know, another, um, oh, let's just say another, well, up from 161.569 to 344.531. So it would be a significant bump in the budget. And I think we have to make, you know, I'm not saying for or against on this. I'm just saying, let's account for the budget, for the operation of the school, for the continuing expenses of the school as budgetary items. And if these ESSER funds are dried up, which we knew was coming, let's just consolidate the uh, ongoing. If it's an ESL teacher or, or a paraprofessional or what have you, it should be, if it's a continuing repeatable uh, expense, it should be part of your budget, in my opinion. Okay, um, I see Susie and then George. I think that some of the choices around funding <clears throat> are discussion that comes ahead. I think it's appropriate for the monies to be list, <clears throat> the cost to be listed in the budget, and then the finance committee and the school committee can work together to figure out the resources, whether some of it comes from free cash or something else. And yes, we <clears throat> tend to lose the history of how we've done things, but I think it's not. Um, I think we'd first discuss their budget with them, and then maybe the finance committee can have a further discussion about the funding sources. George? I would add to that. Um, 
unless the school committee has a specific fund that they can use for that, we need to have it in the budget so that you can spend the money. And so as Susie said, the finance committee needs to dis determine how we're gonna balance the budget. That is how we're gonna come up with adequate funding for the full town budget. So I agree with Susie, that's a conversation we need to have unless you, know, you the school committee and the administration have some other place. Bob made reference to school choice funds and I know that it's your money to spend in the way you'd like, the way you need, and and I'm comfortable with that. But I do hope that in the long run you would think about these sped situations come and go and they're big spikes. And I've always felt, this is me personally, that reserving a portion of the school choice funds and holding it aside for when these, these spikes come might help mitigate some of these increases in your budget. But that's just my personal feeling. Um, I did want to say, I, I want to ask one question, but I also want to say, I just did a calculation, just so everybody knows, without the SPED funding, the school is asking for an additional 2.5%. So that's what this comes out to. We're looking at 6.5, but we all know if it wasn't for the out-of-district out placement, it would be 2.5%. And given what you're saying for the, the increase that you've put a placeholder on, um, seems pretty reasonable to me. Um, you mentioned the EL increase. Is that in the teacher salary line? Because I was looking in the details. I don't see a line for that particular expense for the English language. Is that in the teacher line, teacher salary line? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Oh, and also, I just want to thank you for the addition that you made this year with the comments in the right-hand column. That just, yeah. I find that very helpful. Um, okay, Caitlin, I know we've been sort of jumping around a little bit, but it's been super helpful. Are, are there, um, kind of other significant, um, developments or sort of factors that, um, are worth kind of highlighting for this discussion that we haven't addressed already? No, Jackie and I have worked very closely and trying to look at every single line and make sure that we have the lowest percent increase with what we've been what we've been given for next year mm -hmm. and <clears throat> there are not any significant in increases in anything other than out of district placement and the adjustment counselor and um we we feel like this is the the most bare bones budget we can present to you with these expenses. I will say that we're also relying heavily on school choice funding for next year. We we do have a gap in what we're expecting to spend in school choice with this budget and what we're receiving in school choice to get over this hump and to try to, to limit the amount that we're relying on the town for. Mm -hmm. Um, well, can you, can, maybe we can actually talk about that last issue. So sure. you're proposing to spend a little over $161,000 in school choice funds for these five lines. And can you, um, did you, so it sounds like you, you have some sense of what you're likely going to receive in uh, terms of school choice funds, and it, can you speak to that at all? Like what, what, like what assumptions you're sort of internally making about what, what amount might might come in? I actually can't remember what it was last year, but sure. So we received um, about two weeks ago the preliminary cherry sheet for the state, and we're looking at receiving just under a hundred thousand dollars in school choice funds okay. so we are over expending our school choice account um, which is healthy right now in order to um reduce the the amount that we're asking from the town and and long term is the would would the goal be to have those things kind of roughly be in balance the amount of school choice funds we receive and expend in, in a of course. So long term, we'll we will 
be looking at the school choice uh, revenue and also our rural aid revenue, which is a little bit volatile right now um, and budget accordingly to reduce our reliance on the on those fundings. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Bob. I just want to make the point, and I, nobody answered my question about uh, whether why we account for the school choice the way we do. But if you add the 161.569, which I think is reasonable to the budget, it's very different than what George described as two and a half percent increase, even with without the spend money involved. I think the idea of of using school spend money for school for uh, school choice money rather for sped is a excellent one because it would be it is a revolving reserve that school has and that can even out some of these spikes that as 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 we all know can be a, a difficult to absorb in a budget <clears throat> however i'd like if we just see clearly that this these are staffs and <clears throat> these are as far as i can tell these are things that should be part of the budget and if you added that number to the ask you would have a very different percentage for an increase than what's been described by george i think um uh, that's important to note, and it's important to me that we also recognize that $100,000 is approximately $5,000 for each choice student that we have uh, in the elementary school right now. I think there's 19, so that ends up being about $5,000, a little plus. Uh, but uh, that's 20% of our enrollment, which is an incredibly high number to me. I, I wonder what that means in terms of the future, whether you expect uh, the enrollment to go up and or the, the choice to stay level at around that level? You know, at that I mean, I can answer that question if you want, Bob, or I don't yeah, know please. if that was a rhetorical yeah. question or if you want an answer. Pardon me? I didn't know, if, I don't know, did you want the answer about my prediction for enrollment? Well, I'd like to know what you think, yeah. Okay, so um, I was extremely worried about enrollment uh, for the last three years. It It was very concerning to me. And we do take school choice, but I, and the committee of the past three years, you know, I'm really wary. I don't just accept all the spots for all the school choice because what we run into then are other issues like different special education costs that maybe we didn't even see coming um, and just overall health of our of our building and, and what we can handle. Um, but the, the three-year-olds in town and the two-year-olds in town, there is a lot of them. We have a lot of two and three-year-olds. So that is a really good indication to me that um, that our our in our resident population of of kids is growing. Also, as you all know, like the the houses move pretty fast in Shrewsbury in terms of being purchased. Um, there's internet now, <laughs> um, and quite frankly, our school has a good reputation. So a lot of the people that we are receiving. Um, our, the school is one of the major factors that they want to come. And so so, uh, so in terms of incoming people, it definitely looks way healthier in the coming years than it did um, even, even just two years ago. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Just a brief response to that, if I might, uh, AJ. Uh, I just think we, we've just been watching the enrollment over the last 20 years statewide has been de declining. Uh, population, uh, ch childbirth has been declining. It's so damn expensive to have a child these days. People aren't doing it. So maybe you're right. Uh, maybe that's, it's not, we're gonna be exceptional. But it seems to me the norm that uh, we are dealing with a demographic shift, you know, in this Commonwealth then, we have to be at least be, have a plan for dealing with it if it doesn't turn around. Uh, so I'm just concerned about it from a financial aspect. I definitely agree. Um, Jim Hemingway. Yes, uh, Jackie, in the past, there have been it, intermittently, I know, but uh, was there any leftover money in last year's school budget that uh, could be returned to the town? I, I know some years there's been a little bit that has come back to us, but I was wondering whether that um, was true for last year. We always try, Jim. I always <laughs> yeah. try to do that for you. But um, I think last year was really close. I think we were, it, it was not much at all. And I think it was also because uh, we had that 
um, EL teacher that we needed to like get in there with that we didn't mm -hmm. know about. But Caitlin, you would probably know better than I the the actual numbers. I would have to look and connect with with Gail to to give you an exact number. Um, but we always kind of cut it close because our budget is is pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. George, thanks. Yeah, uh, Susie had sent us a couple weeks ago some letters that you folks wrote. I'm not sure exactly if it was from the school committee or the administration to the legislature regarding um, codifying rural aid and also asking for changes to the circuit breaker. And so I really appreciate that you did that, number one. And I was just wondering, had you had a response from anybody about those items? Uh, I can speak to that. Um, we did that as part of kind of a consortium of other school districts. We're all kind of doing that through. I haven't heard anything since we um, since we sent those out. I haven't heard anything yet. The one thing I would say is that um, it it's more of a symbolic thing. I don't think those two changes would affect us hugely um, because of the size of our district and our funding it would be much less than some of the bigger districts. But it just felt like a thing that we should do considering the kind of uneven funding um, that we're seeing and that everyone around us is seeing out here. Well, I, I really appreciate it. The one thing I will say is I was just thinking about this when we were thinking about finding revenues. And if we were to find out that the circuit breaker formula did change and it created a little more circuit breaker revenue for us, possibly we could think about cutting the budget by that amount. I know there's not a lot of time between now and town meeting, so it doesn't seem like it's practical, but if, Magic dust came out, and all of a sudden we had another ten thousand in it. I'd appreciate it if we could apply it to the budget. Thank you, Susie. Um, the fin finance committee received the end of the year FY twenty three, and on that chart it says the elementary school budget <clears throat> had um, uh, spent out their budget one hundred percent, and um, the regional school spent it out one hundred percent. We did have um elementary school transportation underspent by 5591 so that should answer the question about previous year thanks Edie. um okay any other um questions from the finance committee I I was doing a little bit of just tallying here and, and just I think this kind of relates to a point that George made. I think when George, you said that this budget reflects if we take out that out of district um, place tuition and transportation that the budget is reflecting about a two and a half percent increase over last year. There's sort of another kind of bit of context that I thought might be useful for folks that like of this additional 182000 or $183,000 of funding uh, above and beyond last year, uh, a little over 130000 of that is attributed to those three items. So that would be the adjustment counselor that's moving over to the operating budget, the out of district tuition costs, which were obviously required to um, fund and the out of district um, transportation uh, costs. So those, just those three items account for $130,000 of this projected increase of 183,000. Um, all right, Becky and then Susie. AJ, I just realized um, we haven't, the finance committee hasn't met with some of the members of the school committee before. And I was wondering if you could just take a second to introduce everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I should have done that at the beginning. Thanks, Becky. Um, yeah, can uh, can the, um, well, let's do this. Let, let's, uh, let's just do quick FinCom introductions, just so you know each of us. Um, I'm AJ. Cashew, uh, chair of the finance committee. And then we'll go through the rest of the FinCom. And then if the school committee members could introduce themselves, that'd be great. 
So alphabetically, I'm George Arvanitis, member of the Finance Committee, been a member for about five years. Uh, Bob Groves alphabetically after George. <laughs> Jim Hemingway, and I've been a member of the Finance Committee for the last seven years. This is my eighth year. Um, Susie Mosier, who's your liaison. Oh, it's me, April Stein. I'm a, the newest member of the FinCom, but I had been a, a member many years ago. So I'm I'm a returned member to the FinCom. And, and Jim Walton, uh, I've also been a member. Well, I've been a member of several years. Nice <laughs> to meet you all. Great. So I don't know if you guys want to go in any particular order. I'll start. Bethany Rose, school committee. Chair. Yeah, I'm Jeremy Mayu. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Jeremy. I'm sorry. I'm Jeremy Mayu. I'm the newest, uh, the newest member of the uh, school committee. Just my first year. Good to meet you. I'm Julie Martell, and it's my third year. I'm Jen Taylor, and this is my second year on school committee. Excellent. Great. And uh, the only other member is Anna Hurd, right? Uh, the school committee is not not with us tonight. But... That's mm -hmm. correct. Okay. She um, has the Amherst meeting, which has been going incredibly long these days. She's getting yeah. a lot of duty down there. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions or topics we wanted to discuss with the representatives from the elementary school? Anyone want to raise any? Oh, I see Susan's yeah. hand up. Susie? Yeah, I, I'd like to have a little discussion here. Um, this is a level services budget. Um, and I appreciate that um, that was taken seriously and worked on really hard. Um, I feel like it's important to share where the town is coming from. So with 2.5% levy increase allowed, that is $155,000 that we're allowed to um, start off with. Shootsbury has been trying to keep it or has kept it under that 2.5% tax increase for many years, but that is what is allowed. Um, but as you can see, if the increase is 152 rounded off from the elementary school budget and we get 155 from uh, raising our taxes, then we have to think about other other parts of this equation. Um, we could absorb some of this 152 into the operating budget. We could choose to appropriate some free cash, and especially if the context is some of this expense is not reoccurring in an operating budget um, over a long term, we could consider that. Um, we could think about school choice as part of meeting these spikes, but as you have done, um, it appears that there's not more school choice to tap into. And people could be advocating for some school budget cuts. Um, there are a couple of other income things that could be considered. Um, we know that the state aid on that cherry sheet's not showing an increase for schools like us because they are uh, fulfilling the Student Opportunity Act, which is going to take up a fair amount of money. Um, so we don't we wouldn't count on the state. Um, they we could try to think about rural aid. Um, Shootsbury's cap per capita income is significantly lower than the threshold that. Uh, qualifies people for rural aid. Um, so we could try to count on that um, a little or some. We'll have some new growth revenue, maybe around 40,000. Um, and we have some Airbnb receipts that 
were a little surprising for us last year. I don't know what the prediction is for this coming year. But what I want to do is share where we're at. And it's not an us and them. It's like, how do you put this together? And that, that's important to me for you to understand where, what pieces we're looking at. And, and we haven't gotten to that place where we put it all together and, sh and roll it out in front of town meeting. That's still coming. But I feel it's important to share with you so you know how we would, what some of the resources we would look for and how we would try to account for it and feel like this is a joint effort to get to some sort of balancing point. Thanks, Susie. That, yeah, I, I think that was really helpful. Um, okay, I, I did have I this one question or, or sort of request that occurred to me, um, which is si since this, like one of the significant changes we're making here is essentially making permanent um, a role that had sort of previously been thought of as a as a uh, filling a temporary need kind of post pandemic learning loss need. I think it would be helpful to have either Jackie or somebody from the school committee just talk for just a, you know, a minute about kind of the, what that to just, just talk a little bit about that decision and sort of what um, kind of critical need or set of needs that position is filling and why we shouldn't, why it makes sense to think of that as kind of filling a per, like a permanent sort of need um, as opposed to kind of a temporary, um, addressing a kind of a temporary problem. So I think Jackie can speak very clearly to the need um, at Shrewsbury Elementary, but I'd like to speak um, and just give a brief overview as superintendent, um, because this question is coming up across Union 28. Um, I appreciate the support of the state with ESSER funding to address learning loss. I think it was overly hopeful to think within three or four years of ESSER funding that we could address uh, the the learning loss and the social emotional needs of our students. It has proven that the three to four years is not enough to address the really significant needs of our students. I would also like to say that the social emotional learning and the academic learning go hand in hand. And I think Jackie can speak very eloquently further specifically to Shrewsbury Elementary about what our adjustment counselor does to address the needs of our students. Um, but please know this isn't just a Shrewsbury issue. It's an issue that occurs across Union 28 and across Massachusetts. Yeah, so um, an AJ, I'm gonna address what AJ said, but then also um, I just wanted to quickly address something that Bob mentioned and I agree with him, but a little bit of the a why we did it a certain way. So as you can see all of those positions at the end of this AJ that we were, that we're telling you, we're trying to be really transparent on what we're funding mm -hmm. with school choice. Um, the The essential skills teacher, which is like, you know, you all probably remember it as like the extra help teacher when you were in school, but it's a little bit different now. Um, it's really highly skilled people doing like intense interventions for academic gaps with students. Um, the speech language pathologist increasing a little bit, the math coach increasing a little bit and a para. So these are all positions that are greatly utilized in our school. And I'm going to brag really quickly that, um, sorry, Jen, because you're with all the schools, but I'm bragging about ours. Um, you know, our budget is the the second to lowest in the in Union 28, and we outperform all other three schools by double. And what I mean by that is um, you get like a, a score from uh, the state every year based on your testing and other factors. 
And ours is an 80 and the closest, the one of the next schools is, is a 40. And so what that tells me is, is that we're, we're doing the right things to move our students. And part of that is this comprehensive plan we have in motion for social emotional components, for curriculum and instruction, and for like just joy in school. And it's a like a three prong approach that we use. And um, we are the only school in Union 28 where 100% of our students get access to a counselor or psychologist every single week. Um, our They provide um, social emotional curriculum to our classrooms um, as a special every single week. So that means tier one, 100% of the kids get that at all times. Um, so they have this connection to a mental health professional in particular every single week um, in, in, in that form. Then on top of that, on tier two, like almost 50% of our students receive tier two services from a counselor or a, or, um, a psychologist. And what that means is it's small play groups. It's one-on-one. -on -one, it could be one-on-one -on -one sessions. It could be lunch bunches. It could be recess support. So these are times where these people are teaching our students how to be a friend, what to do when you're upset, what to do if something doesn't go your way. And particularly with our little kids who had a lot of gaps from COVID, those are skills that really need to be reinforced. And the proof is in our school culture, which is really high. And that is not common right now, <laughs> common right now in schools across the, the United States, but also it's um, it's reflected in our students' ability to remain in class, to remain focused, to be getting the curriculum they need, and to also know that there's trusted people that they can go to for support at all times. And um, it's, it's pretty remarkable. Um, I'm happy to have anyone come in and observe some of our social emotional work. We use the program Choose Love, but that's not the whole program we use. They infuse other best practices into Choose Love. Um, and every single one of these school committee members uh, have been a parent during the time when we've been instituting this. So, you know, they can also speak to it. Um, but uh, it's, it's this three-prong approach that we're using with all of these pieces in place that's letting us continue to be so successful, um, really in, in Western Mass, where we really outperform almost everyone in Western Mass. So, um, so if that's helpful, if you have more like specific pinpointed questions, I can answer them. Or maybe one, one of the parents that's also a school committee member can answer what the counselor in particular does for their student. Um, that might be more powerful coming from a, the parent perspective as well. Thanks, Jackie. Uh, Jeremy and then Jen. Yeah, I think I'd just like to speak um, both as a parent, but also as a teacher in another district here, which just to say that, you know, even though we're out of COVID, I think to, I don't remember whether it was Jen or Jackie that said this, the idea that, you know, three years kind of post pandemic, we would be without the need of an adjustment counselor. I know I teach up at Tech and our guidance office, our adjustment counselor are, I mean, their workloads have gone up considerably and they don't show any sign of coming down. Um, my son uh, was not in district as a kindergartner. That was, you know, uh, one of the years of COVID. He struggled mightily. Um, and since arriving at, at, at Shrewsbury because of the, um, the access to counselors, because of the programs, um, he has made up all of his, uh, all of his academic deficits. But he still struggles with anxiety and, and, and also struggles with uh, the social piece. If you're in kindergarten um, and doing virtual and hybrid, uh, you miss out on a lot of those social skills. And so school continues, even though it's a great morale and he's doing really well, it's still a struggle for him um, every day to kind of navigate those social um, those social settings and, and, and with friends and disagreements. And I feel like that's the piece that many of our, especially elementary school students are going through right now. And I think it's the reason why it's so important to have that adjustment counselor position. And I think the fact that we could be sharing that with Leverett and allowing that to go forward because I don't, this isn't something that's gonna change next year or the year after. This is something that's I think really beneficial and allows our students to feel strong and feel confident in a way that then shows up on the other, you know, the other measurements that uh, Jackie's talking about in terms of scores and, and, uh, and arriving at school and being at school, um, all of that stuff. So it feels like a really important thing for us to, to do if we can do it. Thanks. 
and Jen. Thanks, AJ. Yeah, so uh, as a parent of a child who is on the spectrum and in need of counseling services frequently, I can tell you school psychologists are overrun already and really we should have a full-time adjustment counselor per elementary school, we used to. As a nation, we have decided that mental health does not matter to us. And we have continually cut funding across the board, which has made our schools dangerous. It has made our children not have a safety net available to them at any time anymore. Um, and at this point, if we as a town decide that we don't need a part-time adjustment counselor in the elementary school, that would be a sad, sad day. Uh, Jackie and then Bob. I just have one more thing I meant to say, and um, this is not to shame any other school, but I think we all see, you know, reflected in the middle school right now, what happens when a breakdown of trust and um, connection and <laughs> Uh, true development of relationship is is absent. And I think um, the way we have been able to structure, you know, the school psych, who's also really in charge of doing special education testing, like there's a whole, there's a whole bunch of other things that a psych has to take care of that they can't necessarily also be a counselor. Um, that it's, that it is imperative I'll speak for my staff, it is imperative that we continue to culture, to cultivate this culture of trust and love and acceptance. Um, and when we when we send our kids down the hill, we want them to be great role models and we want them to feel empowered to be able to advocate for themselves and others. And I, I really think that we're able to do that in, in the way that we have uh, it set up now. Thank you. And Bob? Yeah, I just want to respond to Jackie. Jackie, I just want to say I'm really happy that you're doing so well over there. I'm proud of you guys, and and I'm I'm really impressed by from all accounts I've heard beyond your own account, I've heard you're doing a great job over there. So good for you. I just want to raise the issue that I raised before. I look at these uh, these uh, positions that are on the screen here, and I see those probably. Uh, frankly, uh, when the COVID money came in and there was ARPA money and ESSER money available, you had the opportunity to get some of these positions filled, and now you see how useful they are. Well, okay, so now they're being converted, or at least you're proposing they should be converted to full-time. You're taking up the, the spike in expense with school choice money. This is not, as we all agree, it's not a sustainable model. We have to address the, we have limited resources. Susie kind of took us through that. And we have to deal with limited resources and demands or requests, I should say, from all departments that are reasonable and credible. And we have to balance all those needs together and alongside or the taxpayer's ability to pay. So what I want to know is why aren't these things in the budget, these positions in the budget? That's what I, nobody, everybody seemed to ignore the question and just acted like it wasn't said. But I think it's something that has to be there has to be a long-term plan here for how to handle this. If, if these are going to be migrating into the budget, let's talk about that. Let's let's acknowledge that. They're not, if they're not part temporary solutions, if they're going to be permanent. For example, the central skills teacher, the way you described this person, that's something you want to keep in your in your uh, school. You need it. You want to defend it and support it. Okay, let's include it in the budget. Uh, you know, it's not like the uh the spend money, which is a temporary spike that could be absorbed into, and I think George made an excellent point, it should be absorbed into the rotating account of the, uh, the school choice. And if you're right, and we're gonna have a whole new uh, generation coming into your school, we're not gonna have choice money anymore. So uh, uh, that that money, that account won't exist. So we have to have a plan to, to, to live without the choice money. And we have to address, uh, you know, transparently, what you're asking for in your budget. So I I'll, won't I'll, repeat myself again for a while, but not tonight. Thanks, Bob. Um, Jackie, is your hand up in response to that or from earlier? Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. so. Um, okay, um, I don't see any other hands. So uh, unless there's a final question. Oh, hi, Jen, did you have your hand up? Yeah. Hi, you know, I, I agree with 
with Bob about thinking about the long-term plan. And, um, you know, I, I'm impressed with the performance of our students in Shootsbury, both academically and socially. Um, we are committed to creating a long-term plan. We are um, also committed to using our school choice to help support the town. And so we want to partner with the town and make sure that we are doing everything possible to support the limited resources um, that Shootsbury has, that all of our small towns in Union 28 have. So it's, you know, we've had long discussions about school choice and making sure we're not over relying on it, but we also want to make sure that we are doing our part to partner with the town and support the town when we can. So yes, we do need to create a long-term plan, but also know that using school choice funding is our way of um, working together with the town to support them. All right. Um, okay. Um, I think I think that uh, that covers it. And um, just want to thank everybody representing the school and the school committee for 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 joining us tonight and walking us through this. I thought it was a really good discussion. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, as I think Susie mentioned earlier, the, the FinCom, I think we, I think we have the information sort of we needed from you all. And um, it's kind of now our responsibility to kind of come up with a plan for um, sort of how to best fund uh, the, the request here. So. Um, we will we'll, we'll get to work on that. Um, okay, so I think we can let uh, the school committee folks go and superintendent and Jackie, thanks again for, for joining us tonight. And Caitlin, I also just wanted to kind of give you a special shout out. I think the, the budget as it's presented, I think, I think is super clear and helpful. And um, I, I just, I, I think the, the small sort of tweaks you made this year, including those comments um, were, were really helpful. So thanks for all the work that you did to, uh, to prepare that and uh, share it with us. Thank you. I appreciate feedback. So I'll take it and originally take it as like a, oh no, I did it wrong, but then I will. <laughs> I'll, I'll correct it. <laughs> no, no, you're doing a great job, but thanks. Yeah, you're here. All right, thank you. All right. Okay. Um, all right, next up for the Finance Committee. Ah, I see Gail is here. Hi, Gail. Thanks Hi. for joining us. I hope you weren't, uh, I don't I, I don't know exactly when you popped in. I hope you haven't been waiting too long. Uh, I'm going to pull up your budget uh, and share it on the screen. Okay, so um, yeah, I think this is pretty straightforward, but is there um, kind of any background that or anything you wanted to walk us through or, or point out to us in preparing your- This uh, is the third year in the row that the beta fee, the software fee has stayed the same and I anticipate it at least two to three years more. So that was always the driving, driving increase in my budget. Mm -hmm. And then the only thing extra I'm asking for is a few more dollars in office supplies because it's $70 every now. You know, two months ago, it was $50 to buy my ink. Now it's over $70. So I'm just asking for a little bit of an increase. Other than that, and then uh, I do split a lot of, especially my schooling at UMass, that is split with Pelham since I do also work for them. So a lot of my conferences, I, I split up with uh, Pelham. Mm -hmm. Other right. than that, like I said, the, not much there. Right. Right. Pretty straightforward. Um, any questions from the, the finance committee? Uh, I think it took us a while to kind of get used to the VADAR um, uh, expense report sort of formats, but I think I think we're in a good place now, and it's um, I, I know you 
you made some some changes uh, to the, the way you prepared that report. So thanks for thanks for doing that. Uh, let's see, Susie, and then Bob. Um, I just wanted to ask Gail if Vadar has met your expectations and if you're feeling good about having made that change. I have been using Vadar since 2004. So I know the program in and out. I love the program. I love the idea it's in the cloud. I can work from home. A couple of times I've been like between my family testing for COVID. I've been able to work from home, no problem. Um, the data is safe, which wasn't on the other one. So I'm completely com comfortable with Vadar. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob? Yeah, Gail, thanks. The budget is excellent. Thanks. I wish everybody would bring us a budget like this. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask you a question unrelated to your budget, though. Uh, we got an email from Becky, and she told us that you had advised her that we could not fund the legal line uh, from mm -hmm. our reserves um, if that money ran out. Is that Why is that the case? Um, because when you go to town meeting, just like if the um, if town meeting had voted down a police cruiser, they cannot turn. You cannot turn around and use your reserve fund to buy a police cruiser after a town meeting if it fails. As for if you do a line to line, the attorney advised me. I guess no one's ever brought it up as an issue, and he saw no problem with it if we wanted to do it as a line to line. Okay, thanks. That's more clear. Okay, any other questions for Gail? All right. Well, thank you, Gail, for the the, the uh, level budget here and virtually level budget, uh, and um, for for all the work that you do. Um, that's critical for for the work of FinCom. So, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I'm not, I'm not quite sure with this tech stuff. Okay, there. Bye. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, all right. So I think what we can do, just looking at the rest of our agenda, is we'll maybe look at minutes from January 9th. Uh, let's see. Susie, when did you send those? I couldn't find them. Oh, well. It was a while ago. Yeah, I, 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 I can send them again, but I you know, I forgot to write on them when I sent them. <clears throat> I, let me see if I can. No, I've got it. it. Here it is. No, I've got okay. it. Okay. Okay. This was 2, 6, 20. All right. Um, did anybody have any questions about the minutes? Oh, actually, I have read these. Mm -hmm. I made a motion to uh, approve the minutes. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Are we ready to vote? Okay. George? Carbon <laughs> inside. Groves, aye. Hemingway, aye. Cashew, aye. Mosier, aye. Stein, aye. Walton, aye. Okay. January 9th minutes are approved. Written. Um, Becky, uh, you had sent an email, I think, a little while ago now, um, about a, um, a potential FinCom request from the highway department related to road markings. Is that still a um, kind of a current issue we need to discuss? I think you're on mute. Can you give us a background on that? Yes, um, I think you all might remember um, when Steve came and you were reviewing his budget, the striping line was $8,000. And he mentioned at that point in time, he had just received a, a bill for $8,900. Um, so he's in, the, in need of a FinCom transfer for that difference. Um, and let me bring up the exact amount. I think it was... You know, 900 plus something. So I need to give you the exact amount, but he does, he's, that bill has been held by the accountant 
um, awaiting that transfer of the, of the balance okay. so that it can be paid. Um, so we so need to take me... action tonight. Yeah. yeah. So we need a motion for $900, Becky, is that it? Um, um, it's uh, 900 and something. Let me just pull. I think up. In, your, in your email, Becky, it was $905.22. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> sounds, sounds detailed. Uh, yeah. So, and it, it, as you said, the invoice was for eight thousand nine hundred five dollars twenty two cents. The budget line is only eight thousand dollars. So, yeah. um, so I, I guess I'll make... we we vote to approve that transfer of nine hundred two dollars and five dollars nine hundred five dollars twenty two twenty two cents. I'll second that. Um, any other discussion about it? Are you ready to vote? Burnett is aye. Groves, aye. Hemingway, aye. Cashew, aye. Moser, aye. Stein, aye. Walton, aye. Okay. Um, I wonder if we, is, is this something we should sort of make note of in terms of the budget for next year? Right? I mean, I wonder. Um, if, I think this is yeah. an item you, you I'm still, am I muted? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, AJ. Um, the, um, Steve has asked to come back to the finance committee and yes. And I think the striping line is one of the adjusted lines. Yeah. Road markings by a lot. But, yeah. but he, he adjusted them in his proposal initially up to 2000. So this is down. I mean, so he's added more, another five thousand. The costs have more have doubled. Yeah, I'm. Well, so hmm. are we going to get uh, him yeah, back so, here with his new yeah. budget request? Yes, we're, we're going to need to, right? Because there, there's, mm -hmm. there's he wants to come here. back to explain all of his thinking. Okay, good. So we'll talk about that. Huh? Yeah, I'm just going to actually while we're maybe I'll just look at the schedule now while we're. Um, talking about this. So February 20th, we have capital planning and the collector. Bob, I'm kind of skeptical that, I don't know if you have a different opinion, that, that capital planning is going to be ready for I'm, February 20th. I agree. Okay. I agree that that's not likely. All right. So Becky, maybe we can ask um, Steve if he can come um, to our next meeting, February 20th, and discuss these proposed changes. Okay. AJ, just one thing. Uh, Ellen is still going to come um, for the tax collector's budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So yeah. we'll do, we'll have Ellen and, um, and highway on mm -hmm. the 20th. And then on March 5th, we had broadband and I'm wondering if maybe we'll bump capital planning to, to that date as well. Again, assuming they're, they're ready. We have a, a date that we've got open on March 19th. So worst case scenario, we could do capital planning on, on the 19th. But uh, March March 5th is voting night, right? Really? Oh yeah, we it's an election day. It's, it's primary. But you, we we can, shouldn't have a meeting on that day. Yeah. We can't? Well, we're Zoom. And we shouldn't. Right. Okay. But um, because I think one thing is it um, it wouldn't be in the building because it's on Zoom. And um, if we have a posted meeting and somebody wants to come, they can just vote earlier. I, well, actually, let me just say that I've been looking at the schedule. We're getting tight because we do have an end game now. It's April 27th. So uh, we could meet on Wednesday if if it's not okay to meet on Tuesday the 5th, but I feel like we need to pay attention to how the calendar is going to catch us up. I, I have a problem with meeting on, on the election day. I'm going to vote in the morning. Yeah, I can vote early, but I won't be able um, to vote often. You know, we've uh, the select board has been discouraging all committees not to meet on election day. And if it had been their week, they would not have met. I'm, um, okay. Okay. I know it doesn't. We used to do it all the time, but then it it 
we had some issues and then we stopped doing it all together. Well, can people check their schedules now for, for March 6th? Is that, is it, is there, Becky, any concerns about us doing it on, on Wednesday the 6th? Is there? No, no I'll just bump um, the other folks that might need my Zoom on the 6th because this priority, especially getting close to town meeting. Six is okay with me. Broadband. Yeah, we got to check with broadband. That's all. Yeah, that would work for me. Um, Jim Hemingway, do you think you could, um, I guess, check with Gail if um, if she would be able to to meet with us on March sixth instead of the fifth? Yes, I can do that. Um, uh, Gail also requests that uh, that the uh, copy of the proposed budget that the MLP wishes to present to the town, um, if we could uh, um, submit that around March 1st, if that would be all right. I know um, you usually like it a little bit sooner than that, but we're working on it. And um, if that's all right with you, uh, that would be great. I think that's fine. Yeah. Anybody have a concern about that? Mm -hmm. oh. um, okay. So um, I think the way this looks is maybe we'll do broadband. That's a, it's a little bit of a packed night, but I don't see an alternative if we do broadband and capital planning on March 6th. Um, and then, yeah, and next meeting we'll do highway and and the collector is that does that work for folks mm -hmm. yeah so, so you don't want the collector on the 20th oh i'm sorry yep, yep we do got it yep, yep. no i misunderstood you yeah so uh, is annual, do we not know when the annual town meeting is yet is 27th, of April? 27th. I, that's what i had heard and when does the budget have to be finalized so we can get mm -hmm. it on the warrant article well mm -hmm. march 20th Ooh. No, I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> you better be. <laughs> no, but it, it's probably 14. at the the March night. What's the next meeting? It's like April. Our meetings are on April second and sixteenth, but we always meet more often than that by the end. Yeah, it would All be right. April second. Yeah. Yeah, I think we need a final budget by the second. Wow. And it needs posted seven days. Well, it's just, um, you know, if you can approve the budget by the second. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just trying to make sure I write down when the uh, uh, warrant is posted on the 20, on the um, 16th, probably. No, oh, 27th. The yeah. warrant must be posted on like no later than April 20th. It's a seven day. It, but Susie, we have to get all the materials out to the public. I understand that. I, I just tried so to make it a calendar. Matter. We're, we need it. We need it before then, or the public doesn't get notified of it. Oh, anything. I know that. I just want to know when the uh, warrant posted day is, and then we keep working back. And you all need time for the select board and for us. So I was just trying to figure out. I think the posting date is. Um, probably April 19th or something. And so we need to probably be two weeks back from there, at least. So if we vote a final budget on April board, 2nd, Yeah, the select board's going to have to have an additional no meeting because their dates are the 9th and the 23rd. Right. So if you voted to approve your budget on the 2nd, they could vote it on the 9th Right. And get all the materials out. Right. And and then we also need to vote on all the warrant articles. So we would need to do that mm -hmm. before the 16th or on the 16th. Or on the 9th. Or okay. 7th. Should we plan to be at the April 9th meeting of the select board for any questions? Yeah. Because we also need to have our information session, um, and that means we need to have our report written and ready. And it looks like maybe our information session 
could be um the 16th well the 16th is a tuesday i i guess we've done it within we've done it inside yeah, within a week yeah. So, yeah, if we do it, April 23rd is a Tuesday that the select board's meeting, but maybe we would do our report on Wednesday of that week because the meeting is on the following, is on the Saturday after that. Or you could do it on the 16th. Yeah. Or we could do it on the 16th. So that'd be our information meeting. And somewhere in there, we've we voted on all the warrant articles. Uh, so I think Sorry, George, were you going to say something? I was going to ask real quick. Um, um, Susie made reference to the annual report. That would have to be done at the same time that um, we approve the warrant articles because that goes out in the mailing, right? We don't do an outgoing mailing. Oh, okay. We haven't. So we, okay, so we could refine that report up until we do our budget hearing. I think that's what we did last year. I'm sure it is. So yes. if we have it ready and use it as part of our April 16th information session with the moderator. Okay, that that's good. Be, but I guess what I'm hoping is that the select board and the FinCom, maybe if we meet with them on the 9th, that's when we can approve all the warrant articles. If, if yeah. they're ready. We could do it at the same time. There's no reason not yeah. to. That makes complete sense. sense. So, so that, yeah, so this is really essential for everybody to flag this on their calendars that April 9th will yeah. be joining and, us. and the second, because we're meeting to approve our budget. Well, I, I'm out of time on April 9th and I won't be able to, I definitely cannot make that meeting, but that's okay. You don't need me. No, we can just, you just go ahead and tell us what you want. <laughs> um, now. Hey, what, what's that? Tell you what? You tell us what to approve on the warrant articles ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your your absentee ballot will be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll ask Grace, Grace for uh, early ballot. <laughs> no, send me. George, I'll just vote proxy for you. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, well, like I was going to say, the the reason I didn't want to meet on the fifth was I could vote early, but I want to vote often. And if I was in the meeting, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't yeah. Vote. yeah. Yeah. All right. So wait, I I think I heard two different proposed dates for our budget presentation, April 16th and April 24th. Did, did I miss on, Did I mishear that? We could wait as late as the week of before um, yeah. the meeting, the meeting on Saturday. We could meet on, we could do our presentation like on that Tuesday when the select board's meeting or Wednesday when nobody's meeting except for everybody else. Um, or we could do it the whole week before. Okay. Um, and you'll want Paul to moderate, so yes. maybe if his availability might influence mm -hmm. your date. That's yeah. Right. All right. I think I'm gonna. I think I'll email Paul to see if he can do right. Wednesday the twenty fourth. If that's okay with, I just like the idea of having a little, mm -hmm. little more time on that, and I think it. I think it works, right? That to do it like the week during the week leading up to, mm -hmm. to the meeting. Yeah, that's what we've done. It's been fairly right. close, like Susie was saying. All right. So I'll, I'll email Paul and see if he can do that. Wednesday the 24th is the possible. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're going to vote on warrant articles on the 9th with the select board. Yep. And last year, the writing of the report went pretty quickly. Um, yeah, it's usually waiting for the numbers, Susie. That's the trick. Yeah. yeah, so if the final budget's voted on April 2nd, well, then we can begin that report. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the, the way this is looking right now, um, I think, think that March 19th meeting might be a good night for us to do our um you know our discussion about how to fund um capital Everything. projects huh. which is you know that yeah. that that's a that's a significant like we need time to do that right that discussion. that's not a quickie yeah you know. that's our funds balance sheet yes yeah. and so you're thinking that would be on the 19th yeah 
And um, the other thing is we talked a little bit about the OPEB, so we might try to plan that in um, part of March 6th. I guess I'd like to know what kind of money's in the OPEB now that the stock market's been roaring. It might be doing pretty well. It's the balance is on the expense report if you want to okay. see. It's, it's oh, okay. 960 something. Yeah, Almost are you down there? Yeah. What yeah. page? What's the? Um, it's the last page, the very yeah. last page 15. Okay. 930,000. Okay. That's what you're looking at, right, April? 930,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 16, well, actually, I'm just remembering it. Wow, it was 865 in December. It, you know, it goes up in chunks every year. Yeah. The Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's so idea. Oh. Um, I'll send this schedule out, but. And upload it too. Yeah, I'll upload it also to the drive. Um, but does this, any concerns about anything? On, on schedule wise here my only concern is when are we going to see the budget and when can we you know because i think we all want to start wrapping I'll get it up before the next meeting okay yeah I, you know because most years we you know it's iterations mm -hmm. there's yeah. constant changes and so we can always wrap our head around it and start to see that see the animals start to grow um also i just so everybody knows, the COLA calculation isn't done yet. We're waiting for the index for January, but I'm expecting that probably in a week or so. So, Becky, you'll have that information okay. for the salary increases. Great. Right. So that'll uh, all be part of the 20th meeting if we can get started. That'd be great. What is the regional budget doing? We'll see this uh, on the seventeenth, huh? Yeah. yeah. There's not been much in the paper. I mean, they still have a one point nine gap. It, that that motion or that discussion by started by the Leverett guy is in the paper now. Why isn't Amherst going to four percent? What why why do they get privileged to be only three percent? So that discussion's churning around. Wait, where, where did you see that? that? That was in today's paper? I saw it in oh, the paper. Oh, that's weeks ago. Okay. Well, only like a week ago, I saw that this the Leverick person was pushing on that. So I think it's I definitely going to be part of the discussion on the 17th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was the same person who was pushing it at the uh, Fort Town meeting as well. Right, right. He started I it did, and continued. I did a calculation, just so everybody knows. I mean, it's a simple calculation. I just figured out what the guardrail is for us if we were going to go up. Um, four percent, and it would be a sixty thousand dollar increase. So it's not small, but for that to happen, Amherst would have to increase theirs by a tremendous amount, not yeah. by just one percent. It's more likely if Amherst went up. I did the calculation. I don't know where I put it. Um, I think it was like an additional seven thousand dollars. So if Amherst went up to four percent, I just kind of prorated how ours went up compared to theirs. Yeah. They add like seven thousand dollars to um, our assessment. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, Jim, I see your hand up. Oh, well, and, uh, this isn't on, on, on the subject that you're currently discussing. I just wanted to give Gail a time as to when she should um, make the presentation on Wednesday, March 6th. Uh, early, I think, would be better because my guess is capital planning will take a bit, of, a bit more time. All right. So why, why don't we do... Why don't we do broadband at six thirty, and then we'll do capital okay. at seven fifteen. Yeah. All right, I'll 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 pass that along to her. Thanks. Okay. And I have the same question for the twentieth. Then, so what time did you want the collector to come, and what time? I don't know who. Oh, Bob talks to the highway. What should we tell them? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think which would be. Well, I think collector is probably a shorter conversation. So maybe we'll do collector first. Um, so Ellen wants to come at 6.30 and then we can see if Steve can come at 7.15. 7.15, okay. Sounds great, thanks. All right, Susie. 
One other topic that we might want to figure out is that um, Municipal Empowerment Act, three pages of in the summary about possible things that towns can do to make their lives uh, better. <laughs> um, and I, I feel like we should read it and discuss it. And if there's something people want to um, see as valuable or if they find something valuable, we might want to think about it in terms of FY25. Yeah, the only one that I thought was relevant to us was excise taxes. Oh, so well, all right. we don't have to talk about it now. So and and also, I didn't know if the um, Airbnb, whatever they call that tax, if that um, if I can um, fo follow it. I, I want I wonder if it'll be a good year for that again, because it was a little bit of a surprise. Mm. Just don't forget that George mentioned on the downside, if the if the regional school budget, uh, if Amherst shifts its position, we're going to be paying more money. If they say grant a 4% increase, then that's going to affect the budget. It's going to affect our assessment. So that could be a possible additional expense that we have to include in our budget. Yeah. So did you, I wanted to check my notes, George, are you saying that if Shootsbury also went to 4%, we'd be at 60K instead of 31K? Yeah, if, if yeah, I'll hold, uh, that's right. Um, okay. But that's not likely to happen. Amherst so. would have to go up by way more than 4% to push gonna... ours that way. Yeah, I think the more likely thing would be exactly what you just said there, George, that Amherst went up to let's call it 4%. And that and that that calculation that you made was- um... I got it right here. Yeah, so what I did was when I increased them by 4%, our, the proportional impact I get is 7,000 additional dollars, 7,113. So okay. our 21,339 would turn into 28,452. That's what I think would happen. But I think ballpark, that number is right. Yeah, scale wise, you know, so it might be a 30 and we, which would still be under a 2% increase for it. So it'd only be 1.82%. Yeah. I mean, should we, I, I wonder if we ought to just talk about this briefly now. Um, if, if that, if that were to come up, um, you know, my, my, my inclination would be that we ought to support that that uh, that a change like that, if, if Amherst was mm -hmm. willing to come up to 4%, even though it would result in, you know, an increase in our assessment, it's a modest increase. And mm -hmm. it would do, it would presumably do a lot to fill the funding gap that they were looking at, at the, at the last. So, I mean, is that, is that, does anybody have a kind of contrary view about that? Um, on the committee, I know we were sort of like speculating what might happen, but but it is helpful to be a little prepared uh, in case that kind of a change or something close to that were to come up at the four towns. I, I I would support that. I, I, just so everybody knows, the reason I even did that calculation was because the paper was quoting one hundred seventy seven thousand seven hundred seventy five additional dollars if Amherst went up to four percent, and I thought, well, does that include our number? And then I realized it didn't. So huh. the region would actually pick up $185,000 with our piece. And yeah, I would not argue with that. If Amherst is willing to come up with 178,000, we'd look pretty silly saying no to mm -hmm. 7,000. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree, I agree okay. with that too. All right, so good. I'm, I'm glad we just had that brief cut because I just, because <laughs> I think, you know, it, it could come up and, uh, you know, I might be asked to, sort of respond and so it'll be helpful to to have had this feedback from you all okay good is there anything else just since we're talking about it now is, it, is there any other sort of prep or discussion that we want to have um um in advance of the february 17th four towns meeting anybody that anybody wanted to bring up susie i find it horrifying to think the cut would be that deep mm -hmm. And um, and what we saw on the cherry sheet preliminary is no support. Mm -hmm. um, and I there I know the only other fund that 
came up last time was the E and D. Mm -hmm. They ended up freeing up some money there. I don't think, I don't, I don't know, Becky. Yeah, I don't think you can just apply that to your budget. Can you? That'd be great. But, um, no, we can't do that. <laughs> so no pots of gold there. But I, I, I want to state that, you know, that that potential cut is way too big, way too big. It's not going to leave us with a, a strong education budget. And um, I we want to not have people flee. Yeah. Uh, Bob? Yeah, I just wonder, uh, first of all, just a slight correction, Susie, that's it's it's an increase in the budget that's causing Amherst to restrict, reduce or restrict how much it's willing to increase funding to the region. Uh, so it's not exactly a cut. It's a cut in services because the services end up costing level service budget as proposed by the region is what is it? One point eight million dollars higher, or something? Or the gap? It's a it's a lot of money. Anyway, I just wonder if anybody else got a chance to look at the data that Doug sent to us. It's kind of interesting. It's not necessarily something. Uh, it does show that the enrollment has <clears throat> steadily declined in the region, and it does show that they do uh, have a fairly significant uh, dependence on choice uh, in their budget. Uh, not as much as we do. We we're twenty percent. They're at 8.8% uh, of their budget is choice money. So 8.8% 8 .8 of their enrollment is not choice students, but uh, as we all know, choice doesn't provide chapter 70 to the region. It doesn't provide any income other than $5,000 per capita. So one thing I was gonna ask Becky was, I don't see the chapter 70 money. I know it goes to union 28, but I never see what we get from the state uh, for our elementary school. Where do we get that information? It's in the budget. It's I'm sure on find it in the draft that they sent. I'm sorry? I couldn't find it in their draft. It's in the cherry sheet. Oh, the cherry sheet, okay. Yeah, we got preliminary yeah. cherry sheet email. Cherry sheet section in the revenue, Bob. It's It's one of the biggest numbers. It's the number, it's the first number. We, um, to that point, Susie was yeah, talking. It's the first number, it's line 26 on the first page. Uh, FY24, it's 645,986 dollars. I did a quick calculation from that preliminary cherry sheet and our total state aid in the governor's budget will be $8,596 higher than what it was in the current fiscal year. 8,600 bucks. Yeah. That, that's what we get from for our elementary school? That's the increase from year to year. Okay. I guess I don't see where that line 26 in the draft budget I have, the revenue is way at the end of the document and it's a much higher value a number of lines. Not in the school. The school doesn't put it in. No, uh, our our. I'm looking at last year's budget, and you'll see oh, it. The budget, the, okay, not the not the draft. The town budget, budget right? The, oh, town, the budget. town revenue budget. Okay, fine. fine. Yeah, it's on the town revenue because the money doesn't go to the school. <laughs> yeah, it goes to the union. I know this. Yeah, no, yeah. it comes to us. It comes well, it to, the town. Not to the union. Wow. It comes to the town. And then we pay our union bill. As see, opposed okay. to the, as All right, opposed I was to, trying to figure oh, out what we get for, is, for a student from 70. No, we don't pay a union bill. I mean, we have a small assessment, but the bulk of it stays in town and is paid. All oh, right, right. Yeah, good point. Okay. Yeah, uh, the town writes the checks. We, we process the warrant that we receive from the district. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, the, anyway, I thought that the, Doug's information that he sent us it makes me understand their system a little better and you know and what the trends are down there uh and he did make a point that most of the choice students there are as he put it inherited from the regional elementary schools the k through six schools so uh, i don't know what that foretells for the future down there with choice but we certainly have a very uh, large percentage of our enrollment at choice now and it's concerning, but 
they put eight hundred fifty thousand dollars into their against their budget from choice this year. Susie, I felt the, that the responses to your questions, Bob, show that it's relatively conservative in Amherst the use of choice, um, and it is inherited, and um, and they are applying eight hundred fifty thousand into the budget. So. Um, and the other comment you made about our our population of choice, it has varied. I'm trying to find that sheet, but of course I have too many sheets out. Um, but it has varied and I can't remember, I sent that as, oh, here it is. Um, yeah, FY24, there's five of them that are staff and, and 19 students. So it's down one from last year and down from other years, it's been up to as high as 26. Now we're down to 19. And the staff part, I think is important to understand that basically that turns into a perk for working there is you have a place to bring your kid. Um, and I think that when you're competing for teachers and you're trying to make lives work, having the staff be able to bring their kids there is, a, is an important, um, option. So it it uh, it does vary, um, but we're down at 19 this current year. Yes, this current year, and five of them are staff. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions related to the regional school budget upcoming four towns meeting? Okay, I, I, I assume everybody's got it on their calendar. Um, so that's the morning of the 17th. All right, I um, think in terms of other topics for tonight, um, we have a expense report that uh, I think was maybe a week ago that I think we haven't done a review in a while. So I'm gonna suggest we look at that now. Uh, All right. Um, so this is through February 10th. Uh, well, <laughs> I guess that's the date on the report, but I can't remember when this. February 1st, it says. Oh, yeah, February 1st. Yeah. Um, OK, I had a couple things I flagged, but before I go into those, did, did anybody have any questions that they wanted <laughs> to ask or any or highlight anything? Uh, Bob? I've got a list if I can read it out quickly. To, yeah. Just a few things. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just wanted to know the legal line says 58% spent. And that seemed like, you know, we were supposed to be out of money there. So I was going to ask Becky about that. I I assume that that has already, like the transfer that got, that, that got approved, is that already in that line? Yep. That was my yep. question. Yep. Okay. Uh, so then the, uh, the water quality uh, line, which is page 4, 5700. Uh, two point five percent. Is that something that's this project uh, we had to test water quality with the wells? Is that line? Uh, is that line necessary? Is that going to be spent in future years, Becky, or what? Page four. I believe uh, that's a board quality. of health line. I mean, it's it's a thousand bucks. I did you hear me, Bob? I believe that's a board of health line. Oh, I see. All right, so. What does it represent? Do you know? Um, the, the testing that they do periodically um, at, I believe, at the lake. Okay. I've just thought I wasn't aware of that. So page four as well, the RMV, non-renewable charge. What's that? Could you, I'm sorry. What line is the second one? It's the line is 55641. This one that I'm highlighting right here. It's on page four. Okay. Is this the cherry yeah. sheet item? No. Is this the budget? I think oh, this might oh, be. I... Yeah, I think this is a question for Gail. I'm not sure that's oh. supposed to be there. Or it's got the wrong title on it. Okay, and the last one. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I think that was an issue last year, and we we asked about that. Did, I think it when they converted the report from Bait to Vadar, I think this popped up, and we never got an answer as to what that is because those are not line items in our budget. But no, what about the line above it? But it is part of the cherry sheet, so that's part of my question. Hmm. It might be a bug in the report. What about the line above it? Yeah, yeah solution control line. Both of those names, both of those names are cherry sheet line items. And they're not on the budget that we put together, that Becky puts together. Yeah. Right. But they are in the on the cherry sheet. And mm -hmm. I hmm. I'm not and seeing I them. think I used to try to put them in the budget and Gail would take them out. But oh, I'll yeah. have to, it's under a receipt. Oh, it's so RMB non-renewable is yep. line 36 under revenue. Yep. It's under the state cherry sheet assessment. <laughs> right. No. So okay. it's a state cherry sheet assessment, and so is the air pollution that's right above it. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. My last question, Becky, is I see the health insurance is out, is written at 50%. How are we doing on that line? And what's where's it going to end up? Do you can you speculate? That's on page of five. The line number is 5170. I believe that, um, right. So we're, and that's through through January. Um, so I believe we will have at least um, potentially two months, at least one solid month, um, which would be, what is that? It's about forty thousand thirty nine thousand dollars a month, I believe, right now, or thirty seven. So it looks like we're going to have an, a, again. We're going to have up to forty or eighty thousand dollars left at the end of the year. And the one reason that is good news again is because of the potential eight or nine percent increase uh, for the health insurance that uh, we will be learning about very soon. Um, we hope to be able to absorb most of this without a major adjustment to this line. So that 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 increase will be during this fiscal year? No, it'll be for FY25. Okay. But they vote it now. You know, they're preparing for next year just as you are. I'm trying, yes. <laughs> April. Yeah, I, I, I'm looking at the, the report. Now I can't. I'm not sure what number it is, but I was looking at under miscellaneous government that the vehicle fuel is of the thirty nine thousand. Oh. We've spent thirty thousand. I was concerned about that, and I'm not sure mm -hmm. which is that. All of our vehicles. I'm not sure what that includes in that. Yes, that includes all highway and police and fire vehicles. Okay. Um, so all that we have, um, which this is alarming, but a year ago it was worse. Huh. Um, we did increase this line a little bit last year, but not much. It looks like um, we're probably going to come up short, but hopefully not more than about six or eight thousand dollars. So okay. Becky, do you know how often they fill the tank? I'm just wondering. It's on the cool. activity, George. It, it, they come about every two or three weeks. Oh, yeah. Is, it, well, is this a, low? Yeah, is the issue true, uh, a, a usage? Is it a usage issue, or is it the uh, price okay. price per gallon unit price or the some prices or are higher? This yeah, the prices are yeah. higher. Yeah. And prices have been volatile. The the fuel. Well, yeah. yeah. The, Per barrel rate, it just fluctuates between eighty and seventy dollars. It's been that way for months. Last year, we ended up at forty-five thousand, I think. Yep. Well. Yeah, that's last year's number. So, um, yeah, my hopefully we'll come in under last year's number. God willing. This is but a this little is bit fine. of a. Mm -hmm. Go we're we're gonna likely uh, have a request coming forward to the finance committee here. And this is a, one aspect of the VADAR that's a little hard is that I don't think 
last year's final number of spending at 45 was what we had anticipated. So it's a little hard to see what the bumps were because it gets rolled right into the right. um, allocation. And so I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how you could. Um, you have to go back to the original approved budget and do a reconciliation, you know? Right. Yeah. Anyway, no, you're right. That's definitely a downside to this report. Right. And I, I did want to mention it that our budget more important. Your budget. It did. I did want to mention that Kaylin told me that they were able to lock in a fuel price that was lower than per gallon than it was previous. And I don't remember. Um, I don't remember where that when it's when that starts, whether it starts for FY25 numbers or if it's currently um, lower than they expected. That'd be oil fuel. Going to your question there about uh, Susie about the uh, not seeing what last year's actual or last year's budget. We can see the actual but we don't see what we started the year thinking. And so when there's a transfer of funds, it just gets rolled into the um, a lot allocated line. And so you can't see how it bumped last year. Mm. You can only see what it ended at, which is 45. So when I looked at this year saying 39, it's like, why didn't we allocate more? It's because the 45 happened later in the year and we didn't anticipate needing 45. Right. Maybe our next cruiser should be electric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With our new EV power station up at the town hall. Yeah, I'll tell you what, our revenues on the speeding ticket side got to be really good. Maybe we can bump <laughs> that up. <laughs> if you ride up Leverett Road, do not go over the speed limit. <laughs> what, do you get busted? No, but I mean, <laughs> they're there every day. <laughs> But I, I see them, you know, across the street from my house, pulling people over all the time on Leverett Road. Mm -hmm. uh, Becky, I had a question about the dam consultant line that I think was, that was from last year's town meeting, right? Uh, and I didn't see any current spending on that. Yeah, right. There was like three thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, you talking about the consultant? Yeah. What? What? what was no, this? that's his. Yeah. No, he. Um. I I have his bill now, so we're going to be able to get it paid, and oh. we're I'm probably going to end up coming back to you, um, because uh, he's he, I think it was three thousand just for one report, and he's finishing up a second report. Which will likely to be three thousand more. All right, so we're actually going to be over on this line. Okay, potentially, yeah. yeah. Unless he doesn't bill me until next year, I don't know. Kind of is that reporting every year? No, it's um. He caught up to the the there because of COVID things. On the twenty one report was still not late when we turned it in in um may or april or may of last of this year so now he's um working on the 23 report and we'll get that wrapped up he's he promised it by the end of the week so hopefully that'll we'll get this payment process soon now that i got him back to work and that's not for anything to do with the drawdown no. Is Becky, is that the same guy That's, that you had before? Yeah, this is Morris Root, and it, he's finishing up his last and final inspection phase one report on the dam that uh, is submitted to the Office of Dam Safety. Okay. And he's retiring? He quote, officially retired June 30th, but I got, uh, he's still working. Good. All right, any other um, questions on the expense report here? Yeah, I have, I have. Thanks, sure, um, 
Are page there... two, equipment maintenance, it's 5701. It looks like it's pretty much all spent, but we got a few months left. Becky, are we going to still need that? So that, I guess that's a potential transfer, right? Yeah. It was a, another big elevator year. Um, I have yeah. uh, the elevators kill us when during inspections, just the inspections are like the elevators, $1,300. There was a question mark um on the inspection because the vent failed to open uh when the fire alarm went off so they gave us 90 days and then they came back with, and the delightful thing about them returning is then they we get charged a second time by our alarm services people i had to bring in our fire alarm people to do the work so just the elevator alone has cost at least half or more of this. this but that's not an ongoing thing. That was just this year. One particular item was more expensive than normal. Yeah. But, but so I, in other words, we can fund it for the same level. I'm in this boat every year. <laughs> every year we're short and we're spending closer to 12,000 or 15 a year than nine. And then the other line I had was veterans benefits. I noticed we overspent it. Line a uh, page four um towards the top. I just lost it. Where was it? Oh yeah. Um 5690. So we're oh wait, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yeah. I assume that we're gonna need a FinCom transfer to cover that at some point. Or yeah. uh fund the fund transfer at some point. Yeah. But that's it. There's no more billing the rest of the year. No. And so that this raises a question in my mind because you're telling us uh, Gail's holding up a bill, um, uh, the striping bill, because it's short 900. It's over budget by 900. But she spent this line even though it was over. So what's the difference? Um, because it was an assessed amount by a um, by an agency. And so when they're assessed amounts, um, she'll pay them and have them get corrected. Got it. That's all I have. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that's it for expense report discussion. Any updates from any committees? Well, for personnel board, like I said earlier, um, we are going to have, we'll get the call of calculations soon. Mm -hmm. We did um, find out that we, uh, Walter is asking for um, increase in pay. Well, Walter Tibbetts is a cemetery groundskeeper um, commissioner, and he's, he's got two groundskeepers that have put in their notice and we had a discussion with him about replacing them. And he asked um, and the board considered raising their rates. So there could be an additional cost on that line for us. Mm -hmm. And we are also looking at um, land use clerk position. There's really nothing to be say, said about that at this point. And a replacement for the recycling coordinator um, was hired, somebody who lives in town. So that's really great news basically the head of the Recycling and Solid Waste Committee. And we're working on a handbook and we're working on a classification schedule. We're also gonna be doing an analysis of salaries to make sure everybody's getting paid um, within market. Um, but I don't know if that, that's not gonna be done in time for this year's budget, I don't think. Uh -oh. Yeah. Can you tell us who's the new recycling uh, chief? Becky knows. His name is Sean. <laughs> um, and tell everybody what he said. Genero. Uh, Genero. Genero. Yeah. Yeah. I think oh, that's Genero. Genero. Oh. Tell everybody what he said. Mm. Why he was um, why he was interested when he in the was job. when he was asked why he was um came forward, he said, Well, he was looking around and he noticed that everybody doing the work uh um were not young people. 
<laughs> and as a younger member of the town, he felt obligated to step forward. As we all did when at some point, yes. right? We yeah. did that. Yeah. Damn right. We've done it a long time. Yes. <laughs> Not everybody, but yeah. yeah. Uh, doing it when my kids were, you know, in diapers. Yep. Yeah. Now you're almost in diapers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope they remember that I took care of them. <laughs> you know, Ben still has the phone number to town hall memorized. Oh. Just, just to try to get me to come home. <laughs> All right. Any other uh, updates from from committee members? Or... All right. Capital planning is meeting tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Five thirty. Well, we'll have a we'll have an update for you next committee. Oh, do me a favor and tell um, Ellen six thirty on the. 20th. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank I'll, you. I'll tell her. Yep. I sent her emails, but she doesn't respond. Okay. I'm yeah. The call. All right. So uh I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second. second. That. All right, I decide. Rose out. Henry Way I. Cashew I. Rosier I. Fine I. Walton I. Last but not least. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Why is that clockwork, AJ? Like right, right on the dot here. Eight thirty. Yeah. Good. All right. All right. Good. So we'll see you it. next on Saturday the seventeenth. AJ, yeah. how about them Knicks? They're <laughs> they're rolling. Yeah. Although, yeah. Got some injuries. Didn't they lose? Didn't they lose? I don't get this. They lost. Saturday. LA. to the Lakers, but they, they lost the game. Yeah. That happens to everybody. <laughs> they're in good right. shape. Have a good night. Yeah, All right. Good night. Take care, everybody. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Yep. My cursor just turned into something with a number on it. It looks like a bullseye. <laughs> Did you see somebody came on the meeting? Do you know her, Marie Kopecki? No, I don't. Okay. Just wondered. Um, yeah.